We're developing the largest business for the whole history of civilization. This is that Stevenson, Ford and Boeing have made together. This revolutionary transport system is essential for every country, every city, every family and every man. It is essential for humanity. The development of transport innovation rail Skyway has taken 36 years and over 7 billions of rubles. For selling the technology, it is necessary to build test sections on which the technology will be certified and demonstrated to the customers from all over the world. For this purpose, in the nearest three years, we should invest the assets propriety to the committed ones. After that, we will become the first in the world transport sector, the volume of which exceeds the Russia's budget several times, and occupy not less than 50% of this market. Boeing is one of the brightest examples demonstrating such facts of history. Empires are to be ruined, the Soviet Union has fallen apart, but its infrastructure, traffic one mostly, has been still functioning, like the Trans-Siberian Railway. That was built a century ago and passed through the revolution as well as civil war and world wars. The track structure of Skyway is based on the string rail technology. These tracks will serve for the benefit of the people for ages, bringing the profits to those who once have ventured and invested their money into this innovation technology. Being certified, the project of innovation will turn into the project of investment. Then the base of this technology-targeted transport project will be realized on all the continent of our planet. Every investor, depending on the volume of its committed facilities into this technology, will own kilometers or meters of these tracks. As for infrastructure, ownership and its dividends, they will devolve to future generations. Inexpensive, safe, effective roads are not required for the state and government officials, but for ordinary people, who pay fares out of their pockets. And these people are not just users, they are taxpayers too. So to say, it is required only for us. For this reason, it was decided to start the innovation corporatization at English law on the terms profitable for investors. New investors have the chance now to buy the shares of our company with large discounts. Today it costs several thousand rubles, but tomorrow it will cost millions rubles. Let's build our future worth living together, comfortable, safe, ecologically clean, with high living standard. Let's build the future, which will be able to devolve to our children and grandchildren for no shame. Okay, guys, I think we already started. It's like five past eight, and um, let's just do it. So whoever comes later, they're lost. Uh, good evening. Welcome to our webinar. Thanks for signing up and attending. Um, so. Just to start with, uh, I would like to introduce myself first. My name is Leo de Matruza. I am representing Global Transnet UK, which is a sister's company for Skyway here in, in London, UK. Um, so just a little bit about myself. I don't want to bore you till death, but um, I've been following Skyway for like one year now. So how it all started? Um, my background has nothing to do with technology and even more like nothing to do with infrastructure but like one year ago uh, I invested in Skyway and since then I've been following it and uh, why I decided to join is because my background is actually in film studies so the well the history uh, and and actually the film industry shows that whatever is being filmed uh, let's say in in 80s, it somehow comes true, right? So let's say my favorite film is Luc Besson, Fifth Element. So when uh, my friend Armand introduced me to, to Skyway, I was thinking that, well, it, it kind of looks like a the flying train, and if that has been in, in TV at some point, it's going to come true eventually. So um, basically, you probably already are familiar with this project, more or less, hence you're joining this webinar, or if not, we, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can, so it's kind of understandable for everyone. So today's topic uh, is modern technology and innovation in the 21st century. Um, 
One second. So let's say I would like to start with just a few examples and comparisons. Um, okay, if you could just uh, maybe, if you have any questions, please do take a piece of paper and a pen so you can write it down. Because um, I might be coming across some information or some names or titles that you might not be familiar with. So uh, you can just take a note and just go and do your research. So what exactly is technology um, and what's the framework? How are, how are all they connected? If you're sitting right now in your let's say, office or your, your room or your house, you probably have quite a lot of gadgets around you. Let's say, I mean, you have probably TVs, phones, uh, probably have a car, um, I mean, radios, and, um, and, and we all have them, we all use them. We all have cell phones, we all have computers, because otherwise we wouldn't have this communication that we're having right now. So the point I'm trying to make here is that basically uh, to, technology is developing like all the time. And uh, if, if you see this slide, like, and you can see, let's say, how technology were 20 years ago, that we would have like computer, camera, uh, Walkman, whoever ever remembers Walkman CD players, then we would have our watch, our pager, and those all would be separate devices. Fast forward, uh, two years ago, well, let's say we all ha had an iPhone. Obviously, every other year, as technology is growing exponentially, it's doubling. So we have newer phones, we have newer TVs, like we have like better cars. Um, I mean, cost-effective wise, and also like memory store wise. Um, I mean, let's I mean, let's have a look at like let's say radios or the trains because obviously. Today we are here to talk about Skyway. So why I wanted to raise this point is because, I mean, what frustrates me as a person who kind of follows the future technology trends, I do attend quite a lot of conferences and events and I speak to a lot of uh, people from the area and from the field itself. Um, and basically what I have stumbled upon is that um, a lot of technology is growing, and it's growing really, really fast without us even knowing it. And, and the future is very exciting. But uh, what is frustrating me that we we do uh, improve things that are around us, as I mentioned before, which are like phones, uh, I don't know, like CD players, you know, like TVs. But we're actually not paying the real attention to for example, movement, and movement is very important because uh, we all, every day, we are going to work, even if it's a car or a bicycle or a train or a plane, we are traveling, commuting every single day. Well, at least all of us at some point have traveled somewhere by using a public transport. So my point is this, if, if this technology grows exponentially, which, I mean, what it means exponentially is that basically uh, it's doubling. So um, it's not growing in a linear way, but it grows kind of exponentially. So if we are using newest gadgets, why are we still taking train to work, which is probably 200 years old? And the answer is very simple. I mean, uh, there isn't anything out there yet that could be something completely new because what happens in the infrastructure industry it is the most through rewarding investment wise but it's also the most challenging um, from the tech technology point of view so we have like trains like for example uh, magnetic levitation trains but to me it's still is a train and it's very expensive to run these trains. So for example, like the modern transportation, like what we have, well, which is the modern, as I'm saying, kind of uh, modern, because like they might look younger, I mean, they're designed, but they actually haven't changed much. So we have the ships, we have maglectic levitation trains that are very 
popular in uh, countries like China, Japan, and also you have planes. Planes probably, well, they are like the fastest uh, public transport that you could travel with, but also plane tickets are quite pricey and uh, planes are very, very unhealthy because like they are producing quite a lot of kerosene. The kerosene goes into the air and it ends up in our lungs. So it's not really, I mean, healthy at all. But I mean, if if you have to travel, let's say, from I don't know London to Berlin, you would most likely use uh, a plane. So, for example, transport in in transition. Like at the beginning, we have you know, like we just had humans as a use of energy source. Let's say 200 years ago, like people were uh, in agriculture, like maybe we would use uh, animal or human labor and then then it would start with maybe like boats and then we we would use horses and then later on as the the industrial revolution happened we start to use uh, uh engine tractors and then later on we had Stephenson who who invented you know like the train but obviously uh is the tran as the transition happens like it's time for the infrastructure to get better and change. Um, if we will have some time, I might show you some videos later, but if you Google them, like the history of transportation and uh, like the history of transportation by year two, then you can just find these videos and you can have a look at them later. So what is the point basically? Like the point is this, that um, as you probably know that uh, we are fast moving towards the post petroleum era. So what does it mean? For like 200 years or more, uh, like the most common energy source to run, let's say, transportation systems, which are probably consuming like the most energy in the world, because as I said, we all move around, we all have cars, we use public transports, buses, and etc. So for 200 years, like the most common energy source was fossil fuels, but obviously nothing lasts forever. So we are fast approaching the post petroleum era, and people already are thinking about it and have been thinking. For example, Elon Musk, which is the CEO of uh, Tesla Car and SpaceX, um, already like I think eight years ago, he started to think about Tesla Car, which is a car that runs on electricity because he already knew that there will come a time when we won't have enough energy for all the cars that we are producing. So hence quite a lot of uh, um, car companies like Audi and BMW are creating cars with hybrid engines. Um, and, and I mean there's numerous companies and there's like numerous people who, who are and, and have been thinking about this for a while because, I mean, we all understand that we have major global issues. For example, overpopulation, uh, I mean, uh, lack of uh, fresh drinking water, like energy issues. And, and to be honest, like, it, there's an issue, and if you can solve this problem, I mean, you can save the world. So, well, why am I addressing this? Because if we're speaking about the infrastructure, then Anatoly Yunitsky is the genius of the infrastructure to me because if I compare him with, let's say, I don't know, Steve Jobs who created a massive dent in the universe, then Anatoly Yunitsky is actually creating this dent for the last almost four decades. So he is the CEO of uh, Skyway Te Technologies. He's also a scientist and a mentor and a businessman. He has written a numerous books and numerous um, essays on public transport. He actually has published two books that obviously unfortunately at the moment they're still not translated in English but I'm hoping fingers crossed that it will happen at some, some point. So he's author of over 140 inventions, author of 18 books and over 200 scientific, scientific papers. Um, so Basically, um, four decades ago, um, I think about like 1978, he has had this crazy idea that, I mean, he's 
he's very into, let's say, um, sustainability. So uh, the, the conventional rail is not sustainability because, I mean, when you are, let's say, it's very simple. When you're digging something in earth to build a road, uh, it's, it's expensive and it harms the nature. And we all know that when you harm nature, it strikes back. Hence, we have earthquakes, we have like tsunamis, and all these problems come because we're affecting Earth. Hence, the global warming also. So he already knew that, let's say, four decades ago, and he decided that okay, how we can avoid this kind of disaster that that's actually like coming onto us, because I mean, it will happen eventually. So if we have, let's say, a plane, and then we have the train. So we're using sky and we're using like the earth. What if we can just uh, be somewhere in the middle, right? So he had this crazy idea. What if we elevate the transportation as we see it today? So it took him about like five years to actually calculate how it could be possible because obviously it is it's not easy to come up with some crazy ideas. It is easy to come up with crazy ideas, but um, I mean, idea is just an idea until it's implemented. I'm sure you all can agree to this. So basically, how it would work, just a simple uh, example for you guys. So basically, if you have a car, just an average car, you would, uh, let's say, 10, 10 liters of petrol would take you X amount of miles or kilometers, right? And if I, let's say, compare uh, Skyway, which could take up to 500 kilometers per hour at the maximum speed, and I, if I can compare it with one of the world's fastest cars, which is Bugatti Veyron, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's not information, but let's say it's 432 kilometers for Bugatti. So, uh, but it's a very expensive car in the first place, and secondly, it's very expensive to, to run this car. So basically, um, why it's so expensive? Because because of the friction. So if the car takes up to 450 kilometers per hour, it might crash because of the CX and all the frictions and um, and it's physics basically. But what happens in air, right? Let's say you have a plane and the air goes all around it and it uses, let's say, less energy. So if you lift, elevate something above the ground, it could go with the same speed, but exactly 12 times less energy consumption, which I think it's very, very great. And you probably are thinking now, yeah, but how is this going to save planet? Because it's still going to use petrol. Well, it's still going to have, at the beginning, at the first like implementation stage, it would still have like the same kind of uh, a, a approach as the conventional train. But, I mean, it's going to save energy and it's just to start with. And then eventually it's going to be able to use solar and wind power. But obviously we would need to get to that stage because like the prototypes, the first models are always a bit, uh, well, old school, but it still has some uh, old kind of uh, techniques. So basically why I like this project because Let's say if I compare it with the conventional train, then I mean you don't have many kind of uh, possibilities there because it's just you would have to dig a road and then you would have to plan and then you would spend so much energy, time and money on it. And you would probably not really uh, deal with any overcrowdedness in the cities because I mean how many people a conventional train actually can take? I mean not that many if you calculate. So, but Skyway offers fast speed trains, public transport, and, and cargo. Uh, so basically, fast speed trains would go up to 500 kilometers. Uh, it would be, let's say, from city to city or to a country to country. And it would have enough energy for 10, up to 10,000 kilometers. And uh, it would be like fast, safe, and, and just really comfortable. Cargo, I think it's one of the beneficial ones also. That, I mean, for example, why I do like this because Skyway can be implemented pretty much anywhere. You don't need to think about how I'm going to like 
do this in jungle or like by seashell because you don't have these problems because it does not affect the soil because it's based on pillars, strings, and uh, so yeah. So basically, it's just uh, el elevated. And you might think, how can it hold so much weight? It's also know-how. So there's some information I cannot expose, and and there's so many things. That I don't know myself, but the idea is basically that as you can see those strings on the screen, uh, basically um, in those pipes you would have a lot of small strings, like metal strings. Let's say your hair on your ha head is very fragile, but if you pull your hair all together they can hold a lot of weight, so it's common sense. So here's like a very similar uh, principle used. And then, of course, of course, the last one is the public transport, so we, which could go up to 120 kilometers per hour, same as cargo, and could be implemented in, in inner cities. So let's say um, megapolis like, I don't know, London, Tokyo would be very um, beneficial to have this kind of transportation. And we actually have orders from uh, East already, but that's a story for another webinar. So, um, the benefits of Skyway technology, uh, well, the decrease of uh, capital and operating costs, which is, for example, uh, it is much, much cheaper to build it and to run it. Um, so, access to new and remote territories, islands, mountains, and seashells, reduction of repair costs and work, reduction of uh, net costs in comparison with high-speed railway, magnetic levitation trains, and aircrafts are at least five times lower. I think it's awesome. So obviously, as I mentioned before in the webinar, um, the um, eventually Skyway will be able to run on solar and wind generators, and and this is great because I'm a huge uh, nature fan. So I am um, only up for this because if you don't harm soil, that means you don't ha harm an animal world, and animals can actually migrate because. Um, Statistics show that by 2035, uh, one quarter of the animal uh, species will be extinct, and uh, no wonder because we're turning the world into concrete jungle basically by just building roads and, and houses and etc. So I mean, there's no place for animals to actually be in, and obviously global warming is a big, huge part of it. But that's again, it's like a business circle when we damage like the nature you know uh, we actually get something back for it stability on ice glaciation snow drifts fogs and dust storms and sand dust and sandstorms um, so yeah I mean stability to natural disasters like hurricanes earthquakes floods and tsunamis and you probably think how this kind of uh, very fragile looking um, infrastructure could actually handle this? Well, the answer is pretty simple because A, it's elevated, uh, B, it would have a similar uh, structure and technology as, uh, I think it's called anti-levitation, where actually the, like the pillars, they would be almost a little bit like floating, but in the ground, which means that we're not affected by any, uh, let's say, tsunamis. Um, so I know that in, uh, China and Japan, they use this technology for their housing. So um, why I have Mazda on this slide? Because basically we do have uh, uh, verbal and written agreements with uh, Arab Emirates regarding Skyway technology. And uh, why, why they are very like, uh, let's say, futuristic because Okay, let's face it, that Dubai, like literally, it was just nothing 20 years ago, and they managed to build so many things, and, and obviously, like, the energy has to come from somewhere, so so they can build cities, and they can uh, have all the uh, artificialness in, their, in the middle of nowhere. So Mazda is actually the first post-petroleum city ever built, and Arabs spend around around 20 billion dollars to build this and it's built on um, concept one planet, planet living which means that it's 100% self-sustainable. 
So basically, they already know what's coming with all the oil crisis. So hence, they're, all the money that they have gained from oil, they have invested in building sustainable cities. So, uh, yes, yeah, so basically, and I believe that, uh, I mean, if, if Dubai has something like similar implemented, I'm sure that, I mean, the rest of the world is going to follow. I mean, I hope I gave you enough information to digest. I hope it's not too complicated or too easy. If you have any, I don't know, feedback, please Facebook us on our Facebook group, which is uh, Skyway Invest Group EU and US. And uh, obviously, um, I really like Buckminster Fuller, and I really love this quote. And he said that you never change things by fighting the existing reality. So here would be, let's say, it's no point to update uh, what we already have because, I mean, if we're willing to change the world for better, we need to change like something completely. And this is why I like new technology projects because, I mean, it's not about trying to improve something old. It's about just changing things completely. But I know it m might take time, but I mean we have to be patient. So, and to change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So, I mean, what I want to say is that basically technology is developing every day and it's just up to us where we are going with all of this and whether we are want wanting to be part of it or not because it will develop and it will expand whether you're on the train or off the train and what I'm saying by the on the train or off the train I mean literally like I think Skyway is the way forward because I mean if you think about it I mean so many things and like places could be explored with like cargo you can access remote locations where there's like natural gas and like diamonds and just iron which is sits there and no one is touching it because there isn't an infrastructure yet to be implemented to go and actually like dig it out and I think it's common sense if you have a problem and if, if you have a solution then it's a win-win for everyone and also with like travel like who doesn't want to travel in a, like an amazingly beautifully done fast speed train where you can just literally go to the station and it, there's like trains coming every like 20 seconds and you don't need to be squeezed in a in a cabin with like another 200 people because you need to get to time and work to work on time so anyway um, so I think this is me done for today uh, I hope I gave you some helpful information so if you have any questions you can just type it inside the chat mind the questions but in chat and I would like to introduce you with Mila, who will tell you a little bit more about uh, why this is important at this particular moment and where are we going with all of this. So enjoy. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Melda. And Lala, can you share screen so I can show my slides? Yeah, I'm gonna make you uh one second. I'm gonna make you a presenter. Yeah. Is it all done? Yeah. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. And mm -hmm. can you also put the glasses if you can see me if you can hear me, sorry. And if you can see my screen as well. That will help me to understand who can see and who's not. Okay. Alright, can you see my screen, guys? Does this look like only allowed to reply to me? Can you put classes, please? Okay, I see a few people replied. Okay, well, let's start with um, with my part. It's called um, investment. Uh, my name is Mila, by the way. <laughs> um, I also worked um, on this project for 
around a year, maybe a bit more. And it's funny that um, when we started, we didn't have lots of information, and it was like a big of challenge to understand what is this all about and how that will implement in our world and do we really need this product and why and how it's going to be there and everything everything. So with the time um, we actually developed an amazing structure. We now have so many people, I believe it's more than 70,000 people now. They're part of the um, uh, Skyway investment, investment group. So they, most of them in, in Russia though, but at the same time we do have offices pretty much everywhere in the world. So we expand expanding very rapidly and we have a reasons why we do this. Um, I will explain in a bit more detail about the investment um, itself and also how it could be beneficial to pretty much everybody on our days. Um, before doing this, I want you to just have a look on the screen and a disclaimer because um, we are not giving you here any financial advice. So we're just sharing information we got from um, our sources, from our experiences. I just also want to let you know what, what exists in the market and why would you need to invest and what return you can get and um, why this project and why now. So this is just a general um, information about um, a disclaimer that you need to understand. Uh, that it's no substitute for financial advice. Um, let's begin. So basically, um, I will talk on this webinar about, um, as I mentioned, investment opportunity, but also I'd love to start with explaining the reasons why people should invest in money now. Um, and of course, our current um, economical and political uh, challenges, they directly correlate it with the need and urgency to invest. So it will be more, um, I guess, an economical background. Um, since mid-September 2008, uh, global economic conditions had worsened significantly. And um, I'm sure you heard of uh, Lehman Brothers. Um, it was the fourth largest bank, investment bank in the UK. And in 2008, it, um, it collapsed with the 25,000 employees worldwide. And the day when Lehman Brothers filled the bankruptcy was the day, I guess, the, the worst economic crisis and leaving memory began. Those of us who don't know much about the banking, I'm sure you noticed something big had happened because the way the people who do know um, about banking, how they reacted, they were completely stunned. And um, analytics, they, they mentioned that um, this was uh, the biggest crisis um, financial conditions uh, they have since 1949. And Lehman was one of the oldest, richest, and most powerful investment bank in the world. And it collapsed in 2008. And that was just the beginning. Um, the financial calendar actually can be divided in the, um, before Lehman and after Lehman. So that was just, I guess, um, the first um, beginning of um, financial crisis. Then we have more. Back in our days, you're all familiar with the um, concept that lending large sums of money into the property market push up the prices of houses along with the level of personal debt. So according to the bank, interest has to be paid and the loans has, has to be made on time. Uh, with this debt raising quicker than incomes, eventually some people become unable to uh, keep the, uh, re the repayment. So basically the more money you take from the bank, you have to pay for every single penny you own, you have to pay interest. So at this point, uh, some people, they were not able to pay in time because the banks just, they, they give pretty much everybody. It was a few years ago, I'm sure you know so this is a newspaper, everybody was able to go to bank and have a loan mortgage. But then the people, they were unable to keep with the repayments. And at this point, they stopped repaying their loans. And banks, of course, find themselves in danger of going to bankrupt. And this process caused financial crisis here in UK. Straight after crisis, banks limited of the new lending to business and household. And this slowdown in lending caused the prices in this markets to drop. And this means those who have borrowed the money had to sell their assets in order to repay the loans. So the house prices dropped in the bubble, in the bubble breath, sorry. and as a result, banks panicked and they cut lending even further. And as a result, and now we have um, like economy tipped into reception. 
So I hope you can see how all this is linked in our daily basis, even though you might be not into property or into finance. But I'm sure you have um, the people, uh, maybe your friends, or friends of your friends, who have been through some difficulties um, in our time. In our day, sorry, going further. Um, so basically here I just want to um, to show you a bit of um, statistics. It might actually sound a bit surprising some people would not really care what happened in economics and politics world, but at the same time those changes they affect our everyday life significantly. So therefore it's important to understand what's going on in the world and around you in order to take the appropriate actions and make the right decisions in the future. So let's have a look on the UK average spending and earnings statistics. Um, actually, this um, data was taken from Office for National Statistics. So the household, um, um, hold on, give me one second. Um, the average spendings and earnings statistics. Do you agree or um, disagree with the following um, statements that I spend more than earn? Uh, well, this statistic presents opinion of British men and women with regards to spending ratio. It was dated, I believe, in 2015. So approximately 60% of men and 17% of women agreed with the statements that um, yes, they earn uh, more than um, that this they they spend more than they earn. A second one: uh, Do you agree or disagree with following statements? I save money every month. And um, here actually you can see that 40% men and 42% uh, women, they disagree. And the last one would be um, how confident at all you are that you will be free of debt in the next 12 months. And you can see 41% um, of men and 40% of more women, they are not confident at all. So uh, you can see the figures, they, um, they're very worried. Uh, at most, almost every second adult in UK worried that would not be able to get rid of their debts within the year. And overall, the statistics tell me that nevertheless, around 80% of British adults earn more than they spend. Almost half of them are not able to save money every month. And they're not even sure if they will be able to free themselves of debt in the next 12 months. For me personally, it's very shocking stats, which means that people who are having full-time jobs, they don't have a certainty in tomorrow day. So what solutions are available to overcome challenges most of us face on a daily basis? Um, investment. So you do need to invest your money. Here are just a um, brief a table what type of investment exists, so like stocks, equity, bonds, mutual funds, or alternative investments, which also can be divided into three groups, a bank deposit, forex, and real estate. I'm not going to go um, detail on this time, but I just want you for you to have a look and see that different types of in investment exist. And um, you also need to do a bit of your research to understand where exactly you would love to park your money. Uh, one of the greatest um, investor entrepreneur, Peter Lynch, has said that the key organ for investing is the stomach, not the brain. So basically, you do need to understand um, how much risk you can take in order to keep up with your investment, because you don't want to put like all your money there, and then if something goes wrong, because investment is a risky business. If something goes wrong, then you will be uh, panicking and um, you don't want to also, you, you really want to assure that wherever the um, a strategy you choose, you also would be able to repay the, um, the, your rent on a daily basis, that you will have uh, money for food, you will have a uh, separate money. So therefore you need to, to choose investment extremely, extremely carefully. But hey, that's why we do this webinar today. Uh, let's talk about the Skyway investment. Here just um, this example of Echo Park, how it will look like. I thought to, to give you this picture, this to have a look. That's everything what we're talking today. It's so real. We have examples and um, we have um, our bureau in, um, next to uh, Belarus. It's in Belarus actually. When you have uh, four floors, uh, people working there on a daily basis, they engineers. And um, wherever, we wherever Lauda um, is telling you so far, this actually happened in, um, in the real time. And um, we had a, also one of our team members travel there. So he can also give you some, a bit of his feedback as well. 
So Skyway investment plan, as you can see, we have uh, here 15 investment stages. We now in 2015, which is um, between four and five. So as you can see, it all started from 1987 when technology was developed. Um, on, by the end of 2017, um, this, this project will, will finish and um, when we already have a plan where we know how much money we need to raise in order to complete this project. So if you are not registered yet with the Skyways, this I guess will be your now opportunity to, to be part of it because we do have a plans um, to go for uh, B2B in the future which also would have some restrictions from people like you and me to invest um, and get and get this and the shares. Uh, what is your return? So basically if you have a look on this table you can see if you invest uh, 1000 pounds now you will receive um, shares in a package which will be exactly 200,000 um, shares which in 2017 will be equal to 200,000 uh, pounds. So it's like 20,000%. Uh, you would never able to find any investment which can cover a 20,000% uh, increase. It's almost impossible. We've been looking with, with my team for like different sites to compare just to see what, what is another guys can offer. And normally it's something between uh, 4 to, I guess, 20% would be... Uh, would be very risky. Of course, you have a real estate. They can also you can um, buy the house, and then you can you can redo it and sell it. But then you also would request you to have some good sum of money to start with. So this is the only investment in the market at the moment which can give you such a huge return. And only the reason it's why is that at the moment we are looking for for clients like you, me, like normal, ordinary people. But as soon as um, everything will be finalized and all the all uh, project will be signed, of course, the company will look for uh, high investors. And then, of course, the price will be completely different from what you can see now in the table here. Uh, five main reasons to invest will be, the first of all, uh, global company ownership. You will become one of the owners of the world's largest transport corporation. Uh, you have opportunity to take the part in the changing world technology, uh, which will cover billions of people on the planet. Also, the company owns exclusive rights to technology, and according to independent experts, the cost of this technology is 250 billion pounds. Uh, also, after um, IPO, which is um, initial public offering, public price would be one pound per share. That's where, from from a table, um, if you can see, let's go back. From table, you can see the shares in the package is 200,000, and the next is uh, estimated cost of the package, uh, 200,000 pounds. So that's what the um, the IPO is about uh, to, to calculate um, what will be the um, cost per share after the company hit um, IPO, and also lifelong dividends, which means that each successful project will bring you the profit correlating with the number of shares you own. So, um, for example, if you earn um, 1 million some shares, let's say, at a certain percentage, you would be able to sell if you wish, or you can keep the shares and you can receive um, the dividends um, on a yearly basis just to keep up with your expenses, which also um, it's excellent structure. We're not talking about just you to have your dividends for one year or two years. We're talking about the project which will cover it like 100 years in advance and your children and maybe your grandchildren, they also would be able to benefit from, from investment you made um, nowadays. Um, I guess that will be it from, from my side. I just want to show you um, that there is, there is economic crisis happening. Uh, maybe not so many people, they think, um, oh, it's not, it's not it's nothing to deal with me. I must work in the banking sector and it doesn't matter. But if you have a look in the bigger picture, you will see that the, the pricing, um, the pricing structure we have in UK at the moment, um, the, even if you go to bank, if you want to lend the money, how difficult it's now. So everything is actually connected. And one of the also biggest uh, reason to create this technology was to boost up um, e economy. We're not just talking about economy of Belarusia or Russia, we're talking about the worldwide because this project will be everywhere in the world. You name the country and I'm sure we have a project um, in this country. So therefore this technology now it's more a need, it's necessity 
and um, we can give you um, our, I don't know, 100% that this will happen, but you also need to believe in this. Uh, that's why from the beginning I mentioned that we're not giving any financial advice, but if you look a bit more detail, you also will be able to have a look and believe that this is all actually happening now. And um, I have a little um, video here because it's actually uh, very recently what happens. Um, Unitsky, you can see him on the right hand side. He signed um, lots of uh, contracts with um, with the people who are investors and now they're working for Skyway. Different countries now involved. So I just um, I will show you quickly this on YouTube so you can have a look. Actually, a bit more details. said um, with or without you it's still is going to exist in a few years time you're going to see everything with your eyes and now you do have this excellent opportunity to be involved in such an amazing product project sorry so don't miss the chance um, if you have any questions now I get the right time to have them otherwise um, I'm also finished with my part so it was a pleasure to have you all here if you have any questions, please um, do share now so we can do a very quick Q&A session. Thank you very much, guys.